Do something there with it. There you go. Do something with it. There you go. Okay, there we go. Just touch it every now and then, right? Yeah. Okay. And what happened was is that the Goths, which were divided into two people, the Western Goths became the Visigoths that settled in Spain and southern France. The Ostrogoths became the Eastern Goths. They had to split up because they were too big. S eventually settled in Italy. And <clears throat> these were Christian kingdoms. They, they basically believed in the principle of religious freedom. So if you were a Catholic, or if you were a, um, an Arian or a Monophysite, you could worship in freedom in those countries because they did not oppress. Their clergy were trained in the Bible, not the great philosophers like the Church of Rome or Constantinople. And they were opposed to the kind of Christianity that would place philosophy above Scripture and deify Mary and the like. The evidence is this is where God's church was for 150 years until spiritual decline occurred. They were Sabbath keepers. In fact, <clears throat> in the, after 538, there was a major uh, battle where the Goths were engaged with forces from, um, I think it was um, Constantinople. But they laid down their arms on the Sabbath because they would not fight on the Sabbath day. So they would be in homes or wherever they met, and they would open up the Word of God because they had to translate the Bible. The only books they didn't have was First and Second Kings. You know why they didn't have that? Wolfolo was concerned. His people had been so warlike in their history. He felt it'd be best to translate those after they became mature Christians. <laughs> so he held off on First and Second Kings, but but he Christianized what, what the papacy would call barbarians. The real barbarians were at Constantinople, killing people over the Trinity in these mob riots at Constantinople. The real Christians were in the western front frontier following Jesus Christ. Now, in the year 410, Alaric I, who was a, 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 um, a, a king of the Visigoth Christians, came and actually took the city of Rome. And the evidence is he got some of the vessels of the Temple of Jerusalem. And there's a book called Alaric's Gold. He died before he could make it back to his kingdom. But according to Procopius, who was a historian contemporaneous with the siege of Rome in 538, Procopius records that those vessels were located, or Clovis thought they were located at Toulouse, which would be the capital of the Visigoth Christian kingdom of the West. And so armies appear from Clovis, the first converted Catholic monarch of all the kings of the barbarian nations. They besiege, they besiege the fortress of Toulouse in the year 508. It falls. With it, the Visigoth kingdom is toast. And it's my own view, and Dr. Shea shares it, and the BRI material on the, on the prophetic dates, there's a little book, I have it here, I'll share it with you later. The, there's a shift where it's, it's, it's being thought by some, and I, I agree with them, that the Visigoth is one of the three horns. It better fits than the hero life. But don't, don't be, you know, troubled by that. Just read the evidence for that. But basically, the Visigoth Christian kingdom comes into captivity. The Ostrogoths and the Vandals, which are also Christianized Gothic kingdoms, will be annihilated. The only one that goes into captivity is, in fact, the Visigoths. They will be absorbed into the papal Christianity established by Clovis that will overtake Spain and become the fabric of the Middle Ages. So really, in a real sense, the captivity of the Middle Ages starts in the year 508, when armies appear, they take the fortress of Toulouse. They attack the clergy. The French kingdom is established. The sacramental system is put into place. And you have the clergy overtaking the Christianized clergy of the Western Empire. So basically, the stars and the hosts come down. And the Bible, the precious bread, is taken away from God's people. And they're forced into the sacramentalism of the Middle Ages. So the, the captivity in the Middle Ages doesn't really start in 538. It starts in 508. It comes to 538 when the papacy gains control of God's people. And Daniel 7 is very clear. He says the saints will be handed over the horn. He doesn't conquer them. They're given to him. So it takes the conquest from 508 to 537. Then, then the transition occurs where the siege of Rome lifts. And the papacy is functioning as the power player east and west. So, so really, what's happening in 508 is analogous to Daniel 1. Nebuchadnezzar shows up, right? What does he do? He takes the vessels of the Temple of Jerusalem, which are associated with the table of showbread. He takes God's people into captivity. <clears throat> and then he carts God's people off and puts them into Babylon. And in Babylon, he sets up a false table that defiles, like an abomination. 
What was the bread that defiled in the Middle Ages that took the place of the Word of God? That took the place of the precious bread, of the bread of the flesh and wine in the Kaya's of the Lord's Supper, maybe? What was the counterfeit of that that became the basis of eternal life, the commodity of the economy of the Middle Ages, in fact? The Eucharist. And so the precious bread was, was replaced by the king's daily portion of bread and wine that defiles. And that's my understanding of the daily. The daily was an attack upon the living Christ, the Word of God. It was an attack directly upon the clergy of the Western Empire that had a translation of the Bible. The conquest of Toulouse in 508 brought this down. Now, Ellen White is very clear that the pioneers had the light on the daily. What does she mean by that? I don't think she meant they knew what it was. I think she meant that the time chronology of the 1290 and 3035 is sound. That's the great chart of Fitch in 1843. This was figured out before 1844. Now moving on, let's go back to Daniel chapter 8. I'm going to get, get to Daniel 8.15 before we take a break. Rub your computer there. Okay. Daniel 8. <clears throat> so Clovis is the new Nebuchadnezzar. <clears throat> In the Christian era, the, the Christian church is forced into the medieval captivity, just like Daniel is. He wanted to get the vessels of the Temple of Jerusalem that Alaric the First had taken. So he went after the citadel of Toulouse in 508. He's, he's the new Nebuchadnezzar. It's Daniel 1 all over again in the year 508. This time it's not Jerusalem. It's the Christians of the Western Empire who, who have historically followed the Bible but have fallen into re, to apostasy and they're being judged. And so the daily is taken away and they go into captivity. Okay, moving back to Daniel chapter 8. Verse 11, it magnified itself even of the prince of, of the host, and the continual burnt offering was taken away from him, and the place of his sanctuary was overthrown. So the papacy overtakes the work of Jesus in the heavenly sanctuary. And the host was given over to it, together with the daily, through rebellion. How many of you see that? Through rebellion. Okay. Which means this occurred through an apostasy, and the truth was thrown to the ground. And the horn acted and prospered. Look at verse 13. Then I heard a holy one speaking. Another holy one said to the one that spoke, For how long? At Matei HaChadzon. Until when is the vision? Or how long is the, the Chadzon? So here we have that word Chadzon again. We had the word Chadzon in Daniel 1, and 8, 1 and 2. Okay. And so we have it right here again. So we have it in Daniel 8, 1 and 2. And now we have it in Daniel 8, 13. Team, right? And it asks the question, how long? And of course, let's just read that through together. It said here, then I heard a holy one speaking. Another holy one said to the one that spoke, for how long is the chadzon, the vision, concerning the daily, the transgression of the rebellion that makes desolate, the giving of the sanctuary and the host to be trampled underfoot? And what's the answer in verse 14? What's the time element of the chadzon based on that answer? Just says, and by the way, did he see 23 days or, <clears throat> or did he hear it? Okay. Chadzon is something you see. So the answer is how long? And the answer is 2300 evenings and mornings. Now, some of you realize that there's been a challenge. It could be 2300 evenings and mornings, meaning 2300 days, or it could be 2300 evenings and mornings, which means half of them are days and half of them are mornings. It could go either way. Have you ever figured out how to tell people what it is without guessing at it? The chiasm will help us know. The mare of the evenings and mornings in late 26 matches weeks of days. So evenings and mornings is used chiastically for weeks of, for days. So we don't have to guess what evenings and mornings are. It represents days. So 2,300 evenings and mornings represents 2,300 prophetic days. Now look at verse 15. When I, Daniel, had seen the vision. Now the word there for vision in 15a is Chadzon. When I, Daniel, had seen the vision, I sought to understand it. The Chadzon's over. He's just seen it. He's trying now to understand what he has just seen. The time element of it has been clearly defined as 2,300 evenings and mornings. And now, as he's trying to understand it, he sees something else. Look at the very next phrase. <clears throat> when I, Daniel, had seen the Chadzon, I sought to understand it, and he nay, behold, Standing before me, Kamari Gever, as the appearance or as the mare of a mighty man. Now this word mare will be translated in Daniel 8.16 and 
and Daniel 8, 26 as vision. The word you have there for appearance in your Bible. Mare. What? It's Mare. It's Mare. Mare. Yeah. The Daniel, the word used for the mighty man, Daniel 8, 15, I'm going to call it B, is Mare of a mighty man. Gever. Gabriel means mighty man of God. Gever means mighty man. So Mare of a mighty man. Now, he has just seen the Chadzo. Now he sees a Mario Mighty Man. Now, someone might say, well, if it says as or like the Mario Mighty Man, is that a Mare? It is. It is because the word can mean just as. And, and contextually, I can, I'll show you why I think that is. In Daniel 10, when he sees the vision of the one man in verse 5, it's not till the end he says, it was a Mario. That vision is analogous to 8.15. So when he sees this angelic figure in a separate visualization, it is sound to say it is Mare. Now why is he using two different words here? As soon as we've seen this imagery here of Chadzon, now suddenly in Daniel 8.15, another word is introduced describing the man, the Mare of the mighty man. Would you like to know why he uses the separate word there? No? Okay. Close yes. up shop. Okay. Turn to, turn to Isaiah. The prophet Daniel read the book of Isaiah. Now, Isaiah chapter 52. The fourth servant song of Isaiah, which brings us to Isaiah 53, which is the lamb that was broken for us. In fact, the word mare is used because it was heavily utilized in Isaiah for Jesus. Now, I'll illustrate this. <coughs> Look in <at> verse 13. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm allergic to these things right here, by the way. You can get drunk on these if you're not careful. Like what chapter was like, Isaiah? It's Isaiah 52, 52 13. 13. <clears throat> yeah. Behold, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up and shall be very high. As as many were astonished at him, his appearance was marred beyond human semblance. Now I want to focus on the first portion of this. He uses the word prosper. He uses the word exalted, magnify, lift it up, and he uses the word astonished, which is the word for desolated. All of those words are used for the little horn in Daniel 8. Did you hear me? Why? Because the little horn is antichrist. The little horn is functioning as the suffering servant, but he's not suffering, he's inflicting suffering. The key imagery you see there in verse 13 is used to describe the little horn in Daniel 8, 11. He's antichrist. He's functioning as the servant when he's not. So this would bring us to the church phase of the medieval church of Rome. Now, look what it says next. Verse 14, as many as were astonished at him, his mare was so marred beyond human semblance. The word mare is used to describe the suffering servant. Now pop down with me in Isaiah 53, verse 2. For he grew up before him like a young plant, like a root out of dry ground. He has no form or mare that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. The word mare is used specifically by Isaiah for Jesus. So when it says it's the mare of a mighty man, we have context in the Bible. In Daniel 8, 11, 12, the, the exaltation imagery is hijacked by the little horn. He's antichrist. And so what he's seen in the vision of the Chodzone is not the truth of Christ. He's seen Antichrist. It's not about good things. This is about bad things. And the Chodzone ends with him being <coughs> real frustrated trying to figure it out. It's Antichrist. As soon as he sees that, he sees Christ, who is the Mare of a mighty man. Now this word Mare will be used in two other places in Daniel, and I'll just take a look, and also the word mighty man. Turn with me to Daniel 8, or Daniel 9, 27. The, the noun occurs once, right there, unless you consider Gabriel's name, which it should, it's not the same. But the verbal form occurs in the 70 weeks. Daniel 9, 27. Okay, anybody want to read that? I'll gladly let you. Daniel 9, 27. What does it say? And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Now who's doing this? 
the end of the 70 weeks. Isn't it Jesus? Okay, look what else it says. Continue. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Now that's good enough. You see the word he will confirm a covenant? See the word confirm? That's the Hebrew verb mighty man, gavar. The same as Mari of the Geber. So the Mari of the mighty man, we, sign, we see Messiah Prince at the 70 weeks mighty man in the covenant. So he's identified as the mighty man. Now turn with me to, to Daniel 10. Here we have the Mari again. Daniel 10. <clears throat> now let me go back to my chiasm here. The big guy. Well, I'll just allude to it. Daniel 10, 7. We have a vision of one man here, which is analogous to the mighty man over there. But verse 4. On the 24th day of the first month, as I was standing on the hand of the great river, that is the Tigris, I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold. Now the word behold is used in Daniel 8, 15. Behold, Kemari Geber, as the, as the Mari of a mighty man. The same thing is used here. He goes on to say, uh, behold, a man, in the Hebrew, one man, Ishachad, clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with the gold of Euphes. Now, the book of Revelation will use this description for Jesus in Revelation 1. So this is borrowed imagery. His body was like burl, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like flaming torches, his arms and legs like a gleam of burnished bronze, and the sound of his words like the noise of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the mare. For the men who were with me did not see the mare. But a great trembling fell upon them, and they fled themselves. So I alone was left and saw the great Mare. So who's the great Mare? It's Jesus. See, I, Isaiah uses this terminology because it describes the suffering servant. As soon as he sees Antichrist hijacking the imagery of Jesus in Isaiah 52, he describes the Mare of the mighty man, the true servant of God who will die and suffer for our sins. Now, if you were Daniel, what was he trying to understand in late 15? What does it say? Go back to it. Daniel 8, 15. Was he trying to understand the Mari or the Chadzon? <clears throat> when I, Daniel, had seen the Chadzon, right? Daniel 8, 15, A, I was seeking to understand it. So he was trying to understand the Chadzon. And as he was trying to understand it, he did see, behold, Kamari Gever, like the Mari, or just as the Mari of the mighty man. He sees a new vision. And so, what do you think? Now, the way we've explained this in the past is, the explanation of the Chadzon is given right after this. And here's the reasoning for this. It's been thought that just like Daniel 7, you have the vision and its interpretation. But that's not what's happening in Daniel 8 to 12. It's chiastic. The interpretation of the Chadzon will not come until Daniel 10, 14, and on. And I'll show you. Turn to Daniel 10, 14. In Daniel 10, 14, the angel shows up to explain the Chadzon. It comes later. He doesn't get an explanation of the Chadzon right away. See the word? Can someone read that for me? Now I've come to give you an understanding of what will happen to your people in the latter days, for the vision pertains to the days future. All right, the hot zone vision is for the future. And then at this point, the angel is explaining it. The explanation of the hot zone, which is the 23 days, is what the king of the north, the king of the south vision is all about. It starts in the days of Medo Persia, goes to the time of the end. It shows what will happen to God's people after the time of the end in the context of Michael standing up for the deliverance of God's people. So it's concerned with the macro time prophecy of the 23rd days. The Mare is understood before this. Turn to Daniel 10.1. <clears throat> as soon as the 70 weeks is given, as soon as the 70 weeks is given, Daniel says, I understood the Mare. Could let someone read that? Daniel 10.1. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel whose name was called Belteshazzar. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. The word vision is Mari. Now in Daniel 9.23, he says, explain the Mari, then he says 70 weeks are decreed. And as soon as the 70 weeks are given, he says, I understood the Mari. But there's no evidence he ever understands the Chadzon fully. In fact, after the Chadzon explanation is given, in Daniel 12, he says, I... I, I tried to understand. And there's no evidence he understood the full implications of the Chadzon vision for the time of the end. It just says, go ahead and die, Daniel. Don't worry. The word's okay. It'll make its difference at the time of the end. So the first part of this was meant to be understood. The second part, um, 
uh, anyway, the first part. The Mare, the mighty man, is, the, is that part which affects Jesus. The Chod zone is the longer time prophecy. So the time element, we don't have to look for what the time element of the Chod zone is. It's given, 2300 evenings and mornings. Why would you have to come up with another wor word for vision to describe the 23 days when it's clearly been established as the time element of the Chod zone by the statement in Daniel 8.14? It's unnecessary. Time. What? In order to give you a starting time. What's the starting time of 2300 days? I'm going to show you. Okay. That's, what, that's why the change in the wording is, right? Uh, no, it's not. Okay. As I understand it, it's not. I think it's a contrivance. I think what we did was, was, was a grasping. If the Mare is the mighty man, it cannot be a time element at, at, of the 2300 days. In verse 27 of Daniel 8. No, I'm getting says, there. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> I'm not done with 827. I'm going to get to 827. It is Mari there, right? It is, but I, I, I already showed you the chiasm on it, didn't I? I'm, see, that can be taken two ways, and one of them works. It, it lays the framework for cut off in day on 924. You understand how frustrating this is because... Um, I, I do, because I've been frustrated. What, what, well, the thing is, when you do this in evangelistic meetings... Now, I've done it in evangelistic meetings. In, with this thing right here? Yes, it's very effective. And, and people don't go, because no. I'm doing that. Yeah, that's because you've been enculturated to see it another way. Uh-huh. That's why you have a mental block. It's all right. I did too. I'm not saying you have to believe this, but hear me out. I'm not saying I don't. I'm just, no, I'm just you, you I'm don't have frustrated with the whole evangelism concept, trying to tell other people. Don't worry about that. Okay. Just get into the Bible. For carry on. Minute. Just enjoy where the Bible may be. <laughs> uh, the Mari is used in Isaiah 53 for the mighty man, right? Now, how many times have you done evangelism day late and it was all about the little horn? Of course. Well, I don't do that. Okay? When I do evangelism in Daniel 8, it's about the mighty man. Well, that's mighty man. Because I believe Daniel 8 is Christ centered. You have Antichrist. Do you know how to cut my screensaver off? Yep. I'll let you come up here and help me. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's been bugging me to death. Yeah, well, it's not going to bug you anymore because I, I need your help with just, just that screensaver thing. But Macs are better, but I was trained in these you know, IBM computers. And, it's taking a while. I live between two worlds. Uh oh. Never. Don't give me anything. Just lock it out. Take it away. Take away the data. Just All right. Now look. Here's the test of this. If he's going to explain the Chod zone, then he'll say, "Understand the Chod zone." Look at Daniel eight sixteen. The angel's given a task. To explain something. Which one is it? Chod zone or Mari? Daniel 8, 16. <coughs> Give me a second. I've got to find it. <coughs> and I heard a man's voice from between the banks of the Eli and called, Gabriel, make this man understand what? Mari or Chod zone? Mari. Mari. Based on that verse. Now, the only other use of Mari is right here in 815b. There is no context up to this point in time to see Mari anything other than the mighty man. Do you hear me? Because the Chod zone is everything from Daniel 8 and 1 to 8 14. And then when it's over, he says, I understood it in 8 15. And, and then he sees the Mari of a mighty man. And then he says, Make this man understand the Mari. How many times have we started out in Bible prophecy explaining the beasts and we leave Jesus out of it? Did you hear what I'm trying to say? We talk about the rise and fall of empires and Jesus is on the sideline. The voice says, The most important thing for you, Daniel, to understand first is not the Antichrist. The most important thing for you to understand first is Christ, the Mari of the mighty man. Amen. And so the explanation that starts in 816, it, it's very clear that what he is describing here is that. Now we have some interesting things occurring here. Now Daniel would naturally be frustrated <coughs> because he'd like to understand what he was trying to understand, which is the Chod zone. And so the assurance is given to him in, the, in a verse that follows here. Daniel 8, verse... Yes, 17. <clears throat> so he came near where I stood. When he came, I was frightened and fell upon my face. But he said, understand, son of man, that the Chod zone is for the time of the end. So he, he assures him the Chod zone is a long time prophecy that reaches to what time? Oh, yeah. Time of the end. But he's been told in verse 16 he has to explain the, the Mare. Contextually, Mare is the mighty man. We have, there's a reason why that big chiasm in Daniel 8, 1 to 10, 12, 13 has Mari at the very center of the overarching chiasm, because that's Jesus. It, the, the chiasm gives us the hermeneutic that the Mari is Jesus, the mighty man is Jesus. 
So we need mighty man's. Gavar is a covenant, Daniel 9.27, that establishes him as the mighty man. Now having, moving on here, look what he does now. As for the ram which you saw with two horns, these are the kings of Media and Persia. So as he begins to explain the Mari of the mighty man, what does he start using to explain it in verse 20? What, what animal? Ram. Ram. Now we find the ram in what vision? The Chazon. So we know the Mare starts at the first part of the Chazon. He begins to explain the Mare of the mighty man by starting with the ram. And then he moves to what animal? Let's, take, let's read these verses so we don't just go over them. As for the ram which you saw with two horns, these are the kings of Media and Persia. The he-goat is the king of Greece, and the great horn between his eyes is the first king, Alexander. Next. As for the horn which you saw broken in its place, which four others arose, four kingdoms shall arise from his nation, but not with his power. And at the latter end of their rule, when the transgressors have reached their full measure, <coughs> excuse me, now, let's stop there. The latter end of their rule. Who is the there referring to in the context? Four kingdoms. Okay, does this king occur in the Middle Ages? Or does this king occur at the latter end of the Greek Empire? The latter end of the Greek Empire. has to be the latter end yes, of the Greek yes, Empire. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work well for the papacy so far, does it? It appears at the latter end of the Greek Empire. Now, look what else it says. At the latter end of their rule, when the transgressors have reached a full uh, measure. And the word for transgression here is pasha. It's used in, in the 70 weeks of Daniel 9. 70 weeks of, of years of decree for your people to finish the transgression. Use the same word here. The indication is when the transgressions of Israel have come to a, a threshold, this king arises. Now look what kind of king he is. At the latter end of their rule, when the rebellions or Pasha have reached their full measure, a king of bold countenance. Is that what your Bible says? What is it? Read it in your Bible. Literally, fierce of face. Aspanim. Now this word is used in Deuteronomy 20. Let's just go back and look at it. Deuteronomy 28, 50. It's coming from there. Okay. Deuteronomy 28, 50. Now, go down to, okay, I'm looking right at it. I'm supposed to be looking right at it. Yeah. Behold a nation of stern countenance, literally fierce of face, same exact Hebrew expression, who shall not regard the person of the old or, the, or show favor of the young. And in the context, when you go down, it says he'll besiege you. It's in verse 52. They'll end up eating their children as a result of that siege work. When did that, what was that fulfilled? Do you think of it, of it when, when a force came to besiege the strongholds of, of Jerusalem and they ended up eating their children? 70 AD. 70 AD, exactly. And so we had a foretaste of it with Nebuchadnezzar, but this is the real fulfillment is when Rome comes and they take the city of Jerusalem. So when he, when he describes this king of fierce countenance, he goes right back to Deuteronomy 28, 50, which is a prophecy of the Roman invasion in 70 AD. Now, moving back to Daniel chapter 8, verse 23. Give me a second. I mean, Romans 8, 23. Wrong book. Okay. Daniel 8, 23. He goes on to say this. Now, this is the chiastic center of one of the chiasms. The latter end of their rule, when the transgressors have reached a full measure, a king of all counts, one who understands riddles, shall arise. So at the latter part of the Greek, divided Greek world, a king who is fierce of face will arise. And that is the word used... The terminology used in Deuteronomy to describe what would be later be Rome. That would come in and conquer the city of Jerusalem, siege it, that eat their children inside the gates as a result of it. Now verse 24, his power shall be great. Now you see that word, his power? The his refers to the king of fierce countenance. That has to be Rome. Rome appears at the end of the Greek Empire. It meets all the conditions of Deuteronomy 28.50. And his power is great. Now does the little horn have great power or does he just magnify himself? He just magnifies himself. The papacy was never a great political power in the Middle Ages. It just had influence. It was able to influence various parties. It did not command massive armies. It could inspire nations to send armies into battle, but it didn't command them directly. The Holy Roman Empire did more or less. It, it was somewhat subservient to that. It was an influence broker. 
Now look what else it says. At the latter end of their rule, no, verse 24, his power shall be great, and he shall cause fearful destruction. The Hebrew could be translated broad, extensive destruction. And in other words, this will be a global power. He would move out, and he would destroy on a massive scale. And he shall succeed in what he does, and destroy mighty men and the people of the saints. Okay, now he's not only, now the little horn of Daniel 7.25 rises up, and attacks God's people in the Middle Ages, right? The papacy does. But the papacy does not fit this description because it did not have this broad political destruction here mentioned. This is Rome. <coughs> the picture of Rome fits the best. He goes on to say, By his cunning he shall make deceit prosper in his hand, and in his own mind he will magnify himself. Without warning he shall destroy many houses. What does it say in your Bible? Does it say without warning, or what does it say there? By peace. Peaceably. That's the word shalva. Peaceably. In a time of peace, he would destroy many. Now, what did Rome institute historically? Roman law. Roman law. What else? Pax Romana. The, the famous Pax Romana, the Roman peace, a, a term coined by Edward Gibbon, his father the cloud of the Roman Empire. Rome's, when, did Jesus die in a time of war or a time of peace? Peace. He, the Pax Romana started in B.C. 31, when Octavian, Augustus Caesar, defeated the armies, uh, I mean the sea uh, navy of Cleopatra and Mark Antony. They took one year to go to Egypt where they sacked the treasure of Egypt. They ended political ch challenge of the empire. They, they initially we call the Pax Romana. Tiberius Caesar follows, and so he becomes an emperor during the time of the Pax Romana, the Roman peace. That Roman peace will last to the end of the second century AD. And so it's during this special period of time that Jesus is born. Why? So the gospel can go to the world. There's enough peace and stability. The world can be evangelized by the apostolic church. And so look what the word that's used here. It's very, very straight here. Peaceably, or shall them, in tranquility he shall destroy many. <clears throat> and he will rise up against the prince of princes. Now the word rise up against the prince of princes is a mistranslation. In the Hebrew, is literally, he will stand upon the prince of princes. Now, that's not the same as like rising up like a little horn. When you stand upon the prince of princes, you're not in heaven. Where are you? We got another thing for power Oh, I just trust you. You're saving the day. If you stand upon the prince of princes, are you in heaven or on earth? Because that's what it says in the original language. He stands upon the prince of princes. This is the death of the Messiah that's being talked about in the time of the Pax Romana. Now, I, I referred to that chiasm earlier. How many of you were not here earlier? Okay, you're all here earlier. That's good. There we have an option. He will be broken by no human hand, right? So what, who does that refer to? The, the king? Now, has it ever has it mentioned the little horn once here? No. It simply calls him a king of fierce countenance. It uses the terminology of Deuteronomy 28.50. So the king is broken. It could be the king is broken by no human hand. And how many of you have taught that? And it's the papacy. I used to for years. It's the papacy that's broken. Here's the problem. The papacy ruled not as a major power, but as an influence broker during times of war and desolation. You know how we know that? Because the Pax Romana came to an end in the second century. And the, Europe is destabilized with one war after another. And Daniel said it would be that way. Look at Daniel 9.27. At the end of the 70 weeks, what does it say? Desolations are decreed, right? <clears throat> well, that's not a time of tranquility or peace, is it? No. So it doesn't fit. To be a time of tranquility or peace, it has to be a time of tranquility. There's only a small period of time in world history that's true. That's the period when Jesus came. Now, what is the angel explaining here? The mare of the mighty man. He's explaining the coming of Jesus. So would it make sense that we'd end with the Pax Romana, with the death of Jesus, if that's what you're explaining? So the word tranquility is used. Now in this chiasm that I, I showed you earlier, I'm just going to show you again. Go back here. Now this is where the subjectivity can be removed by looking for the correspondences. In Daniel 8, where do we have that? 825. Okay, where do we have that at in the chiasm? A2 and where else? A2 and Z. You see tranquility in Z? A25. And then you see bro Prince and Broken in A2, right? That chiastically links with Daniel 11. 
22 and 24. You have the word shell for tranquility, describing the Pax Romana, when a peace alliance is made with Rome. It uses the word shall, again, for the Pax Romana. And verse 22 is the death of Christ uh, under Tiberius Caesar. Forces from him will be, will be swept with, with overflowing flood, uh, will be broken, and also the prince of the covenant. Broken and prince occur in Daniel 11, 22, chiastically matching Daniel 8, 25. Now, if this is, if this is, if this vision here in Daniel 8, 25, is the papacy of the Middle Ages. It doesn't work chiastically. Because the one who's broken in Daniel 8, 25 chiastically points to the prince in Daniel 11, 22. The period of peace, which is the Pax Romana in Daniel 11, matches the word peaceably in Daniel 8, 25. And that word is only used three times in Daniel 8, 25, Daniel 11, 21, before verse 22, and in verse 24, wrapped around the prince of peace, who died in the Pax Romana. So the there's problems if the papacy is there. If you're explaining the Mari the Mighty Man, you can't be explaining Antichrist, you have to be explaining Christ. Now let's look at the very next verse. Now here's the verse you're, you're thinking of. 826. Let's pop over there. Now 826. The vision of... Would you like to read the form? Sure. And the vision of the evening and the morning which was told is true. Wherefore shut thou up the vision, for it shall be for many days. All right, now we have two words for vision used here in Daniel 26. We have the word mare and chadzon. Now, if you had to guess at what the first one is, you might think it's chadzon, right? But it's not. It says the mare of the evenings and mornings, which has been told to you is true, but seal up the chadzon, for it is for many days. Remember verse 17, the chadzon is for the distant future, right? The mare of the mighty man is not for the distant future, and it's not sealed up. <coughs> Now, why does it call it the mare of the evenings and mornings? Have you ever tried to link the 70 weeks to the 200 days without kind of like conjecture? 70 weeks of years are decreed concerning your people. <clears throat> and what does it say? What's the word decreed? So you've said it in your evangelist meeting, so do I. Cut off. Cut off of what? 2300, but also link with the mare. 2300, 70 weeks are cut off of what? The 2300 days. Well, how do you know that? Because the mare links it. I use that in my evangelism. I, because you see the Mari as the 23 days. Yeah. Problem is, he's explaining the Mari in the 70 weeks. Mm -hmm. and, and the Mari is understood at the end of the 70 weeks. But he doesn't understand the Chadzim, which has the 23 days in it. It doesn't fit. What? There is another option. I'm going to tell you what it is. And here's the other option. Okay. There is in Hebrew, that word of can mean something. I want you to write this down. Gesinius Couch's grammar, the word of is what we call a construct state in Hebrew. And what does that mean? It's just the same. How many of you take a Greek? You went to seminary? Some of you did? And remember the genitive in Greek means of, right? Genitive separation. A part of the genitive in Greek, part of something. The construct of can be used in a partitive sense, like the first of the day. The mare, which is part of the evenings and mornings, which has been told you is true, but seal up the chadzon for as many days in the future. The mare of the mighty man is a subset of the 2300 days. That's what he's saying. It's the first part of it. And how do we know that? Because when he begins to explain the mare of the mighty man, he starts with the ram, he moves to the goat. He's using the chadzon to explain it, but he ends at the cross. He goes no deeper than the cross of Calvary. Because the mare is not about the hard zone. The, so that word of can be translated. I, Dr. Shea has said this is possibility as a partitive use of the Hebrew construct state. The mare, which is part of the evenings and mornings, as we told you is true, but seal up the hard zone for as many days in the future. Yes? Doesn't he come in Daniel 9, 23, though, to help him understand the mare? He does. But I thought he understood the mare. He does not. Look at the, look, go to Daniel 9 and look what it says. <laughs> he doesn't understand the mare. Look at, look at Daniel 9, 27. He doesn't understand the Mari there. What, go ahead and read that first. I'll, Let's read it. Make sure we're there. Go ahead. I, Daniel, fainted with six certain days. Afterwards, I rode up, rose up and did the king's business. I was astonished at the Mare, but none understood it. He didn't understand the Mare. Okay, so the angel comes back in Daniel 9 to explain the Mare. Okay. Now, does he understand the Mare in Daniel 10, 1? 
Look at Aunt Tim one. Does he understand the Mari but at the end of the seven weeks? Yes or no? Yes. yes. Does he understand the Chadza? Why is the angel showing up in 1014 to explain it if you already understood it? He doesn't understand it. Now the word Mari means a visual, it's an appearance or vision. The 2300 days, the 2300 days was something he heard. He saw the Mari of a mighty man. So he saw Jesus. So the angel shows up to explain the Mare because he was astonished. What freaked Daniel out in chapter 8? Was it the Antichrist, the little horn power, or the death of Jesus when he was broken by no human hand? That's the question. And the evidence, when you exegete the second half of Daniel 8, the evidence moves toward the Pax Romana, Shalva, the chiasms points to the death of the Messiah. What astonished him was this. The Prince of Princes, who was the guardian protector of the Jewish nation, Michael, would come as a human being. He would die for the sins of the world. And he would be broken by no human hand. He'd be broken by the sins of the world. And it blew Daniel away. And he did not understand that. He had set out to understand the Chadza, this little horn power. When he saw this, he was devastated. So we have two visions in Daniel 8, not one. We have the Chadza and we have the Mari. The Chadza, which is the long 23-year prophecy, which which concerns Antichrist, that exalts himself. He acts like the suffering servant, but he's not. And the Mare is the mighty man, and it ends at the cross. Now, when Daniel 9.27 ends, he neither understands the Chadzon or the Mare, right? Now turn to Daniel 10.14. When the angel shows up after the 70 weeks, when the angel shows up after the 70 weeks, he came to make you understand what is to befall your people in the latter days. For the Chadzon is for what? Many days. Now, the hot zone is represented as days yet to come. In Daniel 8, 26, it says the hot zone is for many days. Okay. The Mari is called the Mari that is part of or of the evenings and mornings. Does Daniel ever understand the hot zone? Now look. In Daniel 10, verse 21, the hot zone is called something else. But I will tell you what is inscribed in the book of truth. He's explaining the hot zone. It's called the Book of Truth. You see that? You do? No? Okay. Now pop over to Daniel 12. Verse 4. The book is shut up and sealed at the time of the end, right? See that? Shut up the word and seal the book to the time of the end. See that in verse 4? Now pop down and let's see what Daniel says here in verse 8. I heard, but I did not understand. He never understands the Chadzon. He sought to understand it in 815. The angel comes to explain it, to give a description of what will be happening to God's people in our days, but he never fully gets it. And there's no evidence he does in the verses that follow. But he does understand the Mari. Now, I want to show you a cross-connection here. Let's, let's look at that chiasm again, which is just an evidence Daniel has encrypted his lexicography into these things. Um, let's go to number of oh, the big guy. No, no, no. It's number two. Give me a second here. I want, I want to let you help me flesh this thing out a little bit here. Okay. All right. Open up your Bibles. Let's look at. You see Prince of Princes in the late twenty-five. Where do you see that? Okay. All right. You see the word. Hand broken by no human hand in 825. Yeah. Okay, we're moving through the chiastic elements. Then we get to the verse we're talking about. Mare of the evenings and mornings. You see that? Then you see the word days, many days, in regards to the chiasm. Then I, Daniel, days, concerning the vision but no understanding. It has a chiastic bookend. I'm going to, let's go to the chiastic bookend. Okay. Behold one man, hand of the river. And, and instead of Mari of evenings and mornings, what does it say? Weeks of days. Weeks of days. The Mari chiastically lines up with weeks. Would that work with the, the 2300 days or the 70, 70 weeks? 70 weeks. 70 weeks. Now, what about, how do we know that evenings and mornings are days? The chiasm defines it. Days. Mari of evenings and mornings chiastically lines up with weeks of days in the Hebrew. And then he goes on to say, days, I Daniel, those days, and so on. So we have a cross-check. Now turn it down, 923. 
And look here. He says, I understand the Mara. You see that? You guys see that with me? The very next word in the Hebrew Bible is Shavuim, weeks. It doesn't say seven weeks. It's glued to the Mare. The Mare of the evenings and mornings in the chiasm, weeks of days. Mare lines up in seven weeks. Why? Because it's about the mighty man. It is of the evenings and mornings because it is part of it. But it's not the whole thing. We have a basis for Daniel 9, 24, 70 weeks are cut off in the, the Mare because it's part of that evening and morning prophecy, but it's not the whole thing. Daniel 8 establishes that connection. Now, turn with me to uh, Daniel chapter 9. Now, I'm looking at our watch here. How are we doing? We got to end when? 5.45. Okay, let's pop over real quick. I'm going to give you an overview. We'll come back and, and look at that on the other side. Daniel 9, verse 1. Now, what happens in <coughs> Daniel 9? Now, by the way, in, <coughs> under this chiasm in Daniel 8, we have two chiasms. One, eight, Daniel 8, 1 to 8, 15, and 8, 15, B to 8 to 9, 1. No, yeah, to, no, no, to 8, 27. And the bookends of those two chiasms is Chadzon, Chadzon, Mari, Mari. Between the Mari, the Mighty Man, the bookends for the first section is Chadzon. The bookends for the second section, in chiastically, is Mari. They're two separate visions. The structure indicates it. The linguistic evidence indicates it. And the syntax allows for it. In other words, you don't have to... When you say Mari of the evenings and morning, you can say, well, the Mari which is the evenings and mornings. Now, here's, here's my question. Why would Daniel use a separate word for the Chadzon vision when he already had a word for the Chadzon vision? Chadzon. And why would he use a word for something which is auditory, which is a word for a visual vision? And why would he use the very word that's always used for Jesus every ever after in the book of Daniel, like Daniel 10, the Mare of the mighty man, of the one man and so on. Now, Mare can be used in various ways, but there's not evidence for that that I see there. And I used to, I used to think that it was the papacy in the second half, but I don't think so anymore. The, the explanation of the 23 days is the king of the north, king of the south vision. I, as I understand it, Daniel 11 and 12 is given as an exegesis of that. In fact, turn to Daniel 8.13. What are the key elements of the Chadzon? Look at that. What does it say? How long is the Chadzon? What does it say there? Concerning the... What? Hatamid. Yeah, the daily. What else? Transgression causes horror. Transgression causes horror. Holy place and a host to be trampled. Okay, he doesn't say one thing about any of those things in the second half of Daniel 8. If he's explaining the Chadzon, he left out the whole thing. You know when that shows up? Turn to Daniel 11, 31. It doesn't show up until the King of the North, King of the South vision. It shows up after the fact. It, once he's explained the Mari, the mighty man, who could mighty man's a covenant with many. And then he says, I understood the Mari. Then he starts explaining the Chadzon. And then he starts explaining what he was talking about in Daniel 13, which is the Chadzon, the daily, and so on. You see in Daniel 11, 31, forces from him shall appear, profane the sanctuary fortress, shall remove the daily, shall set up the abomination that makes desolate. And, uh, and so the explanation of that portion is coming later in Daniel 11. It's not coming in the second half of Daniel 8. So that doesn't work either. So the evidence, I believe, is overwhelming that what you have in the second half of Daniel 8 is Rome. And you have the coming of Jesus. You have the death of the Messiah. It is the, the Mare is the 70 weeks. It is the Mare of the evenings and mornings, part of it, which is weeks of days, chiastically. It's a subset. It's a... Now, we know in Daniel 8 that the Mari is explained with what part of the Chad zone. He starts with what animal? The ram. So if it's cut off of the longer vision of the 23 days, it's cut off of what part now? First part. First part. We don't have to guess at that. We can demonstrate it by how it's being explained. The Mari is being explained by using the first part of the longer time prophecy, but it ends with the death of the Messiah. The 70 weeks now has context. When the angel shows up in Daniel 9, verse 23, he goes on to say this. Um, At the beginning of your supplications, a word went forth. You see the word word? And I have come to tell it to you, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore, consider the word and understand the what? Vision. Chodz on Amari. Amari. He did not understand the Amari in Daniel chapter 8. Now he's going to explain the Amari. Now, if the Amari is the 2300 days, when you talk about Antichrist a whole lot here? 
Say that again. If the Mara is the 2300 days, would he not talk about the Antichrist a whole lot here? Because that's what we have, the little horn. And the Chads of the 2300 days is about what the horn does. Am I right? Or wrong? Mm -hmm. I think I'm right. Daniel 13, isn't it? Say that again. Uh, if he's if the okay, if the Mara is the 2300 days, which I don't believe it is, wouldn't he be talking about the little horn? Right, and the rest of Daniel 9. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's not what he's understanding. It's the 2300 day prophecy. But he's not. He's talking about Jesus. Am I right? Now, the Mari of the mighty man is Jesus in Daniel 15b because it's Jesus in Daniel 10, 4 to 7. And, the, and so you, why is he doing it? Look what he's saying. Now, he's saying something very clear here. Therefore, understand the word in the Hebrew with the Mari. The, the word to restore and build Jerusalem together with the Mari is the key here. And then what does he say? Seventy weeks. Shavuim. Weeks. Understand the Mare. Weeks in Hebrew. Seventy weeks are, are decreed concerning your people and your holy city. To finish the transgression. Remember the, when the transgressors had reached their full li limit, that king of bold countenance would arise? All right? To finish the transgression leads to destruction of Jerusalem. To put an end to sin. To atone for iniquity. To bring in everlasting righteousness. To seal both vision and prophet. To anoint a most holy place. Now, who did that? Jesus did. So when he's saying, understand the Mari, he goes to Jesus. Does he go to the little horn power there? No. 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 So the Mari, you know, is of the evenings and mornings, but it's the Mari that blows him away. Now going down here, I'm not going to do all this with you, but go down to verse, um, you see where it says, its end will be with a flood. The Messiah Prince, his, it could be translated, his end will be with a flood. And then he's, now, Daniel 11, 22, with overflowing flood, armies will be swept before his face, literally, and the prince of the and broken, and the prince of the covenant. So it uses the imagery of Daniel 11, 22 as well here. It says, desolations are decreed, and he shall make a strong covenant. The word make a strong is literally gavar. He will mighty man a covenant. Now if he's explaining that the Mari is about the 2300 days, the hot zone, which is the 23rd days, is about the Antichrist. Why is he spending all of his time on Jesus here? Now, if the Mare is about the mighty man, then there's a good reason for this. And look what he says next. And he, and he shall make a strong cup of many for one week, and for half a week he shall cause a grain offering to cease, and upon the wing of abomination shall come one who makes desolate, until the decreed end is poured out of the desolator. And look at 10.1. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a word was revealed to Daniel, who was named Belteshazzar. The word was true, and it was a great, cont a great host, literally. And he understood the word, and he had understanding with the Mare. So the word to restore and build Jerusalem was understood with the Mare, which would be the 70 weeks. Now, look at the, you see where it says word was true? How many of you see that in your Bible there? 10-1. Go back to Daniel 923. What was revealed to Daniel there? What went forth? A word went forth. You see that? Do you? Now you see the word true. Go back to Daniel 826. The mare of the evenings and mornings, which has been told you, is true. So understand the word with the mare. Daniel 826 is linked to Daniel 923 by his understanding in 101. And then he ends by saying he understood the vision. Now, what word do you think is used for vision there? Chadzo. Now, if he understood the Chadzo, at this point, he would understand the little horn power. Am I right or not? Am I right or not? Yes. Okay. So what word do you think he uses there for vision? He understood, he understood the Mari. Now, if he understood the 23 days, wouldn't he understand what happened in the 23 days or not really? He would have to. So it wouldn't make any sense in my thinking, for this to be anything other than what it, what it seems to be, that this is the vision, of two visions in Daniel 8. The Chazon is the longer time prophecy. The Mari is part of it. The Mari is the first part of it. It is the vision of the mighty man. It leads us to the time of tranquility when Jesus dies on the cross in the Pax Romana. It is of the evenings and mornings being part of it. And then when the angel shows up, he explains the Mari with the 70 weeks. And when Daniel sees the 70 weeks, he gets it. He understands Jesus. He never understands the Chadzot. 
Now the explanation of the Chad zone contextually comes at the end of, so we have a chiasm here. We have a Chad zone, Daniel 8, 1 to 15a. We have the mare of the mighty man. And then the explanation in verse 16 to verse 26. Then we have the prayer for understanding. Then we have the explanation of the mare in the 70 weeks. And then we have the explanation of the Chad zone that follows in Daniel 10, 14 to the end of the book. It's chiastic. It's not linear like Daniel 7. He starts with Chadzon and Mari. He doesn't understand it either. He prays. The understanding of Mari comes first. Then the understanding of Chadzon comes. Daniel 10, 14 to the end of the book. I didn't mean to freak you all out with that. You may, they may never ask for me to come back here again. <laughs> I'm challenging you. Look at it differently. We'll see what's going on here. Okay, are there any questions here? We're going to take a break. You have lots of questions, don't you? <coughs> I just pulled the, the, the plate out from your feet there, didn't I? You know what? We never really did answer Dr. Ford. Because we do guess at when it's cut off of it. Just to say it's cut off in the Mars 23 days does not tell us what part of it it's cut off of. Does not establish the relationship of the 70 weeks to 23 days. It's guesswork. And the part of use of the Hebrew construct according to Shea is a possibility. And he's seen these chiasms. And the person who came up with that is Dr. Shea. Now, I'm not saying he agrees with me right now because I haven't gone through all this with him. What I am saying is that there's another way to look at this. And this is that other way. And here's the test of my view. Not gonna, whether I'm right or wrong, how you can prove me right or wrong. No, here's how you can prove me right or wrong. I'm engaging you now. Okay. You wouldn't want me to... I treat you as a thinking pastor here, because you are. Because most pastors don't even know the Mari. They wouldn't be aware of Elder Shea's work. So, thank you. If... The one was, if, if Daniel 8.25 ends in the Middle Ages, I am wrong. If it ends at the cross, I'm right. I see that. The chiasms indicate I'm right. Because the image of 8.25 matches Daniel 11, 22, and 24. Well, you, 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 did, you did ask the question about how, how do we how do we answer Shet? I mean, how do we answer Ford? But just deduction, if you, if you move that 70 weeks, any other part, in the 2300 days, it doesn't fit anything else. But that's conjecture. Yeah. That's assumption. But God leaves something like the 70 weeks, the 300 days, with loose ends that you could not nail down. Well, again, to me, it, 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 what, I've under, what I've been taught to understand, it does nail it down, because if you move it anywhere else, it does not work. Well, I just talked to Richard Davidson on the phone a few weeks ago, and I said, how do you demonstrate that? And the people in the know are striving how to demonstrate that. Uh -huh. Okay, so let's not be so sure of that. It was not demonstrated. Okay. It's conjecture. Now listen, and then, and then God, God has been leading our church. I'm not denigrating what, what people have done here. And don't take it that way. We're, we're headed toward the mark of the beast in this country. We need to get it right. And that doesn't mean that we don't have some things right. But if we think we have it so tack right... The evangelicals out there are smart. A lot of them are very smart exegetes. You just read some of the books that are being produced as commentaries. They'll catch this conjecture business, and they write it off. So how can you demonstrate what the Mari is? How can you we have to use lexicography through chiastic analysis, and we have to demonstrate it through solid exegesis. And when you have a verse that says, in a time of peace, peace rises up, and we say that's the Middle Ages. We're talking out of both sides of our mouth. You can't have a challenge against the Prince of Princes in a time of peace being the desolating era of war in the Middle Ages without being wrong. And they're going to simply say, well, you, guys, you don't know history. So we, we have to be careful. And God has allowed us, because of these cross connections, to get it right. That's my understanding. Yeah. Now listen, I had to retool on this matter. I had to totally retool and I do have a sermon I'll be leaving with Elder Wagley of, that I, I preach on. Make like a simple and evangelistic meeting? With slides. I'll leave it for you. How's that? <laughs> How's that? So I'm, the fact is, I'll show you something here real quick. Here. Now look, you study that. Don't do anything without studying. And I'm not asking you to do something like that. But here it is. I preached this in Goa, India to a Roman Catholic archdiocese. A church was raised up in India. 
And I used the very slides you're looking at here. It was shortly after I discovered it. And I didn't know the chiasms at that point in time. Why did I spend all this time on chiasms? Because I did not want to have guesswork going on here. The lexicography must be demonstrated, or else we're just guessing at it. So what is the Mari of the evenings and mornings? Chiastically, it's weeks of days. That's, that's a lexicographical association by chiastic association. So I, didn't, I don't use that in my preaching, okay? I use a linear format, but it, people get this. I used to always have them, well, yeah, you mean this, that. I find the lights come on. Now, Rob, you used, used this too. You learned it up north? Um, actually, from from yeah, Joe Skrabowski? Uh, I never studied it completely. He just threw some nuggets on the day when he was at church, and I went back. Because I was already looking at Mari Hatzel and the differences between them about seven years ago. And I didn't quite get it, and I got frustrated and left it. And okay. Well, well this, this sermon here is it. Now, this is what I preached in Goa, India. How long is the literally Cod Zone? Day like 14. A Chodzo vision is 23 evenings and mornings. But seal up the vision if it pertains to many days hence. <clears throat> so the Chodzo is for the distant future, the time of the end. You know, he said, so he came near where I stood and he came, I was frightened, and I fell upon my face and so on. So again, the time of the end is the 19th century, generally speaking. It will fall by the sword by captivity and plunder. And I just kind of work through it here. Four facts in Daniel 15. Daniel 15, the vision of Chodzon is finished, and Daniel is reflecting on its meaning. Number two, in Daniel 15, Daniel sought to understand the vision, but he had just seen. Now, Daniel sees a new vision in verse 15 as he is contemplating the previous one, which ended in verses 13 and 14. Fact number four, the new vision called the Mare, specifically the vision of the one who looked like a man, or a mighty man. Then we go through Daniel 8. We just go through the second half. The Mari is the vision of one who looks like a man. I heard a man's voice between the banks of Eli and I called Gabriel, make this man understand the vision. So, and then I, I just simply, and I have a manuscript for this, so I've written it out. So it's a 45 minute presentation. Um, then I go through the emperors that led up to the Pax Romana, Augustus Caesar, Tiberius Caesar, in his place shall rise. I go to Daniel eleven twenty one to show the parallels. The cross again. The prince is broken, and I, I then go to Daniel eight twenty six. The vision of the evenings and mornings, which has been told you, is true, but seal up the vision for it pertains to many days hence. <coughs> the vision mare of the evenings and mornings has been told you, is true, but seal up the chad zone for it pertains to many days hence. So the chad zone vision is a subset or part of the mare, and that's what in my manuscript I talk about. The part of you, so that means it's a subset of it. It's the first part of it. The mighty man is the 70 weeks. And we later discover the explanation of Mari. The vision Mari of the evenings and mornings is is true, but seal up the Chodzon. All right, and he does not understand the Mari. So the angel comes back and understand the Mari. Okay. Seventy weeks have been decreed. Cut off. The Mari is cut off of but the evenings and mornings. That's why it's of or part of the evenings and mornings. And then the word means cut off. And then I have like the scissors. You see the scissors? Let's cut it off. But we know it's cut off with the first part because of the ram and the goat. So we don't have to guess at that anymore. And then the Mari is 490 years. The time of the Mari is the 70 weeks. The time of the hot zone is the 23 days. The Mari of the evenings and mornings means the Mari is part of the longer time prophecy. And with that association, all discrepancies dissolve between the 70 weeks and the 23 days. They are understood as a single unity, two visions uniting the first part of the Chod zone is the Mari, which is the 70 weeks. The Mari of the evenings and mornings, weeks of days, chiastically. So then, you just go to the end. Seventy weeks have been decreed, cut off, right? I just go through it like we normally do at this point. Three decrees, the word through story build Jerusalem. So that at this point it's just ground we're used to. And um, then we end. I, I use the chart at the end. The Mari has to do with the earthly Jerusalem. The Chod zone is an attack upon the heavenly sanctuary. They're distinct. The Mari is for the city of Jerusalem. The Chod zone is for the heavenly sanctuary. The natural break is the end of the 70 weeks. To anoint a most holy place, to anoint and inaugurate the heavenly sanctuary. 
So the Mari is really the attack upon the Messiah, Jesus. The Chadzon is the Antichrist attack on his ministry in the heavenly sanctuary. That's the distinction between the two visions. And then 457 BC, I mean, it's just the same. The difference is, I don't have people coming back at me anymore challenging 1844 with this. Or its connection to 70 weeks. They don't just say, wow, pastor, you're smart. No. They say the Mari is the first part of the 70 weeks, of the 23 days. It's cut off because it's of the evenings and mornings. They see why the word cut off is used as context based on day only 26. And they, when they look at the second half of day late, they're not saying, well, that's the papacy, even though it's the Pax Romana. Even though it's the Roman Empire contextually. See, the imagery of the little horn during spiritual phase is not utilized in the second half of Daniel 8. So if it's an explanation of the Chadza, why is it absent? Why do we not have Daniel 8, 13? The attack of the daily. None of that's given there. All you have is the breaking of the Prince of Princes. So I want you to think about what I just said. Now, retooling is a little difficult sometimes, right? Well, you're up to it. Go stay. Let's pray. God bless you. Dear Father, I know we've thrown a lot out today. We're going to come back at it and look at it in a more reasoned way as we go through the 70 weeks. Bless us and keep us in Jesus. How many years have we taught the books of Daniel and Revelation? We talk about the beast too much. We talk about the little horn as if he's the focus of the whole book. People aren't converted by the little horn. They're converted by Jesus. If Daniel wanted to understand the, the, the Chadzon, you said you need to understand the Mari, the mighty man. We need to understand Jesus to get things right. And Father, I realize this is new, and no one here is compelled to buy it, but I pray that they'll look at it and consider its evidence and look at it maybe differently. Lord, no matter how we do it, the new way or the old way, let's not leave Jesus out of it. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.